recording is started. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, the trig form of complex numbers. And what you'll notice in this section is that there are a whole lot of formulas. We'll try to simplify a few of those down for you right now. If you happen to have a complex number, you know, the regular old A plus BI kind of thing right here, right? If you happen to have that, we're going to rewrite those into the trig form, which is going to be R times cosine theta I sine theta. Now, the things you have to remember, right, are R is square root of A squared plus B squared and tangent of theta is A over B. A is R cosine theta and B is R sine theta. So let me show you just one little example and we'll get going. All right, let's say I want to take this complex number, I, or 1 plus I, and change it into a trig form. The very first thing I need to do is find out what R is. Now remember, R is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. But B is the number um, multiplied times I. And in this case, there isn't one there, so we'll think of that as times 1. right? So B is a 1 and A is a 1. So in this case, it's the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 2. Now I need to find out the angle. So what I remember is that the tangent of angle theta is equal to B over A. Which is 1 over 1 or 1. So I know the tangent theta equals 1. So theta is equal to the tangent inverse of 1. And you look on your unit circle, and the tangent inverse of 1 is 45 degrees. So I now have the theta, and I have r. So I'm now able to rewrite this in trig form. So it's going to be the square root of 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus I times the sine of 45 degrees. So there, I have just converted that into trig form. Now, what are we going to do with these numbers? Once we get them into trig form, we're going to be asked to do a lot of things with them. One of the things that we're going to be asked to do is we're going to be asked to multiply them together. Now, there's, if you look through the, the book or the uh, e-book, you'll see some, some uh, formulas for doing all this stuff. And the formulas are pretty complex, so I'm going to try to simplify them down. Once you get to numbers in trig form. If you want to multiply them, all you need to do is, is multiply the R's and add the angles. So if I wanted to take Q times T, I don't know why I'm doing that in red, let me change it back to Y. It's just going to be 9 times 3 times the cosine of 45 plus 15 plus I times the sine of 45 plus 15. So here we go. Let's see. Q times P is going to be 27 times the cosine of 60 degrees plus I times the sine of 60 degrees. This should be 60 degrees. Okay. Now that's nice, but every once in a while they will ask us to turn, convert that back into trig form. To convert that back into trig form, what I have to remember is that A is equal to R times the cosine of theta. So A is equal to 27 times the cosine of 60 degrees 
which is 27 times 1 half. 20, oh, right, it's 27 over 2. B is equal to R sine theta. So it's going to be 27 times the sine of 60 degrees. So that's 27 times the uh, square root of 3 over 2. Let's look it up on my unit circle. So I have 27 times the square root of 3 over 2, and that's B. So if I wanted to write that out in just trig number, and I'm sorry, this this trig form, and I want to write that back out in complex number, it's going to be, of course, a plus b i. So ours is going to be 27 over 2 plus 27 times the square root of 3 over 2 i. So we've written it out. We've multiplied these two numbers out and left it in, in trig form here. And then we converted that trig form into just the regular old complex number form here. Okay. All right. Let's go on. If you're going to divide two complex numbers in trig form, we want to take Q divided by P. There's a long formula in the book, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to take and divide the R's, 9 divided by 3, and subtract the angles. So this is going to be the cosine of 45 minus 15 plus I times the sine of 45 minus 15. All right, so let's see. This is going to be equal to, let's see, 9 divided by 3, that's the 3. And that will be the cosine of uh, 30 degrees, right? Plus I times the sine of 30 degrees. There we go. So we have just divided these two numbers that were in trig form. Now, our answer is still in trig form. If you want to convert that back to complex number form, all you need to do is say that, okay, A is going to be R times cosine theta. So that's going to be 3 times the cosine of 30 degrees. I looked on my unit circle on 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So this is 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. So I'll write that out as 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. B will be our sine theta. So that will be 3 times the sine of 30 degrees. But we know from the unit circle that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So I'll wind up with 3 over 2. So our number in complex number form will be A plus B I. So it will be 3 times the square root of 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 I. And that's going to be our answer if you want the answer written out in complex number form. Okay? And then one more. Let's say you are going to uh, raise a trig number to a certain power. What I'd like to do at this point is um, I would like to raise 3 times the cosine of 45 plus i times the sine of 45. I'd like to raise that whole thing to the fourth power. Again, there's a long formula for that, but here's what you do. You're going to do. You're going to just raise the r to the fourth power and then multiply each of the angles by 4. So here's what it'll look like. This will be 3 to the 4th power. Again, for some reason I'm writing in red, so let me go back. It's going to be 3 to the 4th power times the cosine of 
45 times 4 plus i times the sine of 45 times 4. Well, let's see. 3 to the 4th power turns out to be 81. Cosine of uh, 45 times 4 watts, 180 degrees. So that's the cosine of 180 degrees plus I times the sine of 180 degrees. Okay. Now we've just written that out and we've got our answer in trig form. But again, if we want to write that out in complex number form, we need to take it a step further because, well, let's take a look at this. Really, we're going to say 81 times the cosine of 180 degrees, but the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. And the sine of 180 degrees is 0. So really, I'm going to have 81 times negative 1 plus i times 0 plus just 0. So 81 times negative 1, so that's just a negative 81. And there we go. That's the answer they're going to be looking for in the homework, is negative 81. Okay. So we've raised the trig version of that number to the fourth power and got negative 81. The formulas are very complex. Just remember how to work on them. Uh, remember it in English, and it will be a little bit easier than trying to memorize the formula.